celebrating 16 years of Young Turks. Now we just saw a glimpse of what our lives will be with our robotic companions. But what powers robotics? Artificial intelligence. From self-driving cars to self-propelled lawnmowers that know the difference between overgrown grass and carefully maintained flower gardens. Not only will our daily lives change, but so will the working of enterprises. Amidst a complicated business environment, burdened by exponential volumes of data, threats from digital upstarts, and customer de demand for more value, what can artificial intelligence do to reimagine the future of our business? To talk about this newest wave of technology, we have with us Vishal Sikka. Really, when we think about the times that we are living in, it seems that every other day, there is uh, something or the other that we hear about some amazing, some breathtaking application of AI. And uh, uh, just the other day, I was reading about these kids at OpenAI in San Francisco. Um, they built a robot that can uh, learn to watch, um, uh, learn an activity by watching um, a video of that activity or watching someone perform that activity. They, you know, learn to make an omelet, for example by watching someone make an omelette. And uh, AI is um, fundamentally changing the way we think about ourselves. Um, we hear about impact of AI on automation, on jobs. Every other day, there is some story or the other that comes out about the role of AI in impacting what happens to the future of jobs in, in many areas. And I think it is fair to say that perhaps not immediately, perhaps not in the next few years, but certainly in your lifetimes, we are going to see AI technology advance, AI technology evolve to the point where anything, any job, any task, any activity that can be described in a precise way, that can be articulated in a precise way, is going to be done automatically. And so we have to think about what does that mean for us in the times ahead, what does that kind of a advance in technology mean for us, for our, for our humanity. And my own sense is that the great human frontier uh, in the long run, in the time of AI, uh, is problem finding. It is entrepreneurship. It is innovation. After all, innovation is no different, no more than looking at the world around us and seeing what is it that we can uh, improve here? What is it that this world is missing? I think that in the time of AI, a new kind of a Cambrian explosion is in front of us, where we develop a sense of being able to see what is not there, being able to imagine something that will improve things, and then to use AI technology to amplify our ability to get that done. And uh, the age of AI is coming at exactly the right time for all of you as you think about the future and you innovate the future. You know, Alan Kay always says, the best way to predict the future is to invent it, and all of you are doing exactly that. Thank you very much, Vishal Sikha. The future of real tech will be about uh, the coexistence of man and machine. So in that context, then, the big worry is what happens to jobs. You alluded to that. You're talking about automation. Without getting into specifics about Infosys, uh, Vishal, what do you really see as far as the threat when it comes to creation of jobs for human beings as well as retention of jobs for human beings given the developments in AI? There is no doubt that there is going to be a massive impact on jobs. There is absolutely no doubt about it. Uh, a lot of the jobs from the routine ones, um, bank tellers to grocery clerks, uh, more sophisticated jobs like uh, um, MRI imaging, radiology will be impacted. There will be a massive change uh, in jobs. I mean, if you think about the logistics industry in the United States, uh, there are a huge, several million truck drivers, and it is uh, eventually, it is inevitable that at some point in the near future, we will have autonomous truck driving software and so forth. But the important thing, Shireen, is that all these jobs that we think about, that, that AI will displace, these are all jobs, in some sense, looking backwards in time. And the nature of technology is that every technology like AI that displaces a job of the past, mm. that same technology creates several jobs of the future. You know, a friend of mine, Sebastian Thrun, who runs Udacity, uh, he said that the going rate for an autonomous car engineer these days is about $10 million. Wow. And so 
um, learning to become an autonomous car engineer, every car company, every logistics company, every truck company is going to have autonomous car engineers, mm -hmm. people who integrate and implement these systems and, and so forth. You're in the Ginny Rometty camp and I remember my conversation with her where she talked about how she believes that we're going to move to new collar jobs uh, with the advent uh, uh, of AI. But uh, Vishal, you know, Yes, you, or no, or you know, she no collar jobs. <laughs> no, no collar jobs. Well, yes, yeah, you've 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 given that a, a completely different spin. But uh, you know, Vishal, are we as a country ready uh, for that kind of transformation? I mean, we keep talking about skilling, reskilling. We're talking about the kind of massive transformation that the Indian IT services sector itself has to make, uh, and we haven't even gone past that just yet. So, are we really ready for this kind of shift towards the jobs? that AI uh, will create? A culture of massive entrepreneurship where uh, the creative spirit of a billion people is ignited uh, and is enabled by AI, it is amplified by AI. This is something, if we go down that path, if we learn to um, do these things, if we learn to acquire these skills, I think the sky is the limit. Uh, but there is also at the same time no doubt that uh, if we continue to be focused on delivering the jobs of the past, and try to be competitive by being cheaper than the others and so forth, then that journey uh, ends in a bad place. Uh, Infosys has been investing in startups. You're looking at startups today as well. Uh, you know, broadly, what is it that you look for when you look at a company in the startup space? We invested in a startup uh, here in India that has built uh, advanced drone technologies. Um, we invested in a startup out of Carnegie Mellon that works on air purification using uh, extremely small, extremely lightweight and cheap sensor technology and uh, lots of technologies around complex data analytics. We recently acquired a company called Skytree, which has built some next generation machine learning technologies and also uh, bringing together many different kinds of solvers and, and so forth. If I were to ask you about a list of problems, the number one problem that you would like to address uh, through your idea of purposeful AI? So ultimately, the problem of applying AI to learning itself, to improving our humanity to augmenting and amplifying our ability, uh, whether it is in medicine or simply in our ability to become better by learning better. Uh, those are the problems that personally appeal to me a lot. Thank you for your time here for the Young Turks Conclave. A big hand, ladies and gentlemen, for Vishal Sikha. Thank you so much. It's really a pleasure, Shireen. Thanks so much. We've now come to the end of the seventh Young Turks Conclave. A huge round of applause for the entire CNBC TV 18 crew who has put this day together. Seventh Young Turks Conclave is powered by Satyabama University, driven by Ford Mustang, wealth partner Ars Group, luxury partner Rado, hospitality partner Andaz, Delhi India's first luxury lifestyle hotel, and celebration partner Vira91. Our gift partners from the Young Turks family, the labellife.com, Napa Dori, Vajor, T Box, Aromas of Kurg, and XOXO Day. We're proud to be associated with each one of you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time and hope you had an inspirational evening. Celebrating 16 years of Young Turks.